Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Gat Lex. It is Thursday today, so weekend is approaching, which is always nice. It's just been a crazy week this week. Um, as some of you might remember, I was up late uh, the night between Sunday and Monday to watch the NBA All-Star game. I never really got into a rhythm after that, so I didn't have any training on Monday because I was just basically too tired. I went out with my club on Tuesday and uh, rode for about two and a half hours, which was great. It was uh, windy as hell, but we got around to doing some uh, pretty good intervals. Yesterday, got uh, late home from work. I think it was about six o'clock before I got home. It was just a long day at the office. And today I was actually supposed to go to uh, watch a football game tonight with my uh, father-in-law, but uh, they are, talking about a snowstorm this this evening so a lot of snow will begin to fall within the next couple of hours and I just didn't want to um, go out in not dangerous weather but weather that can uh, cause some tropical um, what do you call it uh, trouble basically so instead I'm staying home tonight and uh, I will be doing some uh, some riding on the bike I will be hopping on Swift uh, within the next couple of minutes and basically I think I'll be doing some sweet spot intervals today um, not really feeling it today so sweet spot is the way to go on days like this and I will be doing it on the tarmac bike and not the TT bike but I will be talking about the TT bike in just a minute. So the TT bike, as you can see, has got a little animal on it. And that's because my son likes to lie right here. So we move this little part and move it here. And so he can lie beneath the bike. And for all you bike dads out there, this is a great way of getting your kid interested in cycling because he loves lying there. But we just uh, put this small animal on to uh, give him something to focus on instead of the bike always. But the thing is that this bike currently has the uh, indoor wheel on it. So that means that I, will, I can use it on the trainer. But hopefully soon I'll be out riding uh, outside with this bike. And hopefully I will also be competing on this bike but I don't have a disc wheel. I do have uh, an NV7 uh, wheel for the rear, uh, which is great, but a disc wheel is just a bit more, uh, how do you say, time trial-ish. So I've been contemplating whether or not I should just buy a disc wheel and they are crazy expensive. Uh, I can buy a used one and they're not that expensive, but a lot of the times when you find used disc wheels, they're only 10 speed. And I know that you can modify the cassette and I know that you can modify the body and all that, but I just feel more comfortable uh, riding a true uh, 11 speed disc wheel. And I haven't been able to find a 10 speed disc wheel that I really wanted because I will be usually be running the NV6 sevens on this bike and as you probably can uh, figure out it will be a pain to swap out the brake pads on the rear because they are mounted beneath the crank let's see if we can just see that so the brakes are just hidden beneath the crank here so that rules out uh like the head jet disc and also um some of the other uh, clincher disc wheels because they usually have the aluminum brake tread I was actually looking at the round wheels, disc wheels, because they're not that expensive. They look pretty good. I know they're not full carbon, but I could manage by changing the brake pads. Uh, it's not that complicated, it's just a bit of a hassle. And they're quite cheap. I think they're about 500 euros or so for their version of, and stuff like that. But will I be using it enough to justify using 500 euros on a disc wheel. I don't really know. 
So I've also been looking at some of the wheel covers that Realtek uh, make and also the ones that, um, what they call wheel builder, uh, the aero jacket. Uh, makes so basically that's just uh, a plastic cover or if you get the ones from uh, Realtek it will be um, a carbon cover of some sort that you just attach to the wheel and you basically get a disc wheel it's a lot cheaper than actually buying a disc wheel um, but that also means that it's a bit flimsy uh, to tell the least I've, I've read great reviews about it but I will be uh, taking it on and off uh, every once in a while because uh, when I'm not, uh, when I'm just training, I don't want to use the disc wheel at, uh, anyway, so I will be taking that off. But they're about 100 euros or something like that, I think. So they're not that expensive. So I am leaning more towards the, the aero cover more than the disc wheel. But let me know what you think about it. I've also bought some new base pads for the base bar handlebar thing. So if you've ever ridden a Shift TT, you know that the, the like the the base plates that you lie on, that you rest your your elbows on, are just horrible. I don't know how anybody can find uh, find comfort in that position because you don't get that much support. So I bought some um, from uh, Sip instead, the Vuka ones, uh, and they look pretty cool. So I will be updating the bike with those uh, extensions, not extensions, what do you call it, the base plates or stuff like that. And also the pads for the, the, the base plates. So hopefully that'll give me a bit more comfort and making me a bit more comfortable in the aero position. And that's about it for now. I think I've covered most of the stuff I have to tell you. So it's time to get on the bike now and hopefully uh, do some great sweet spot intervals. So thanks for watching once again. Uh, hope to see you out there soon and uh, like and subscribe. Bye.